and welcome to the Business Finishing School Financial Battleship Podcast for November 2019. This podcast is for Module 12, Lifelong Investing Success. My name is Kristen Kolka, and I have with me, as always, Teresa Kuhn. And today we will be continuing the conversation we started last month, which is uninterrupted compounding and how um, this one principle can help you reclaim the power of your dollar. Welcome to the call today, Teresa. Thank you so much, Kristen. Happy to be here. Hello, everybody. And this is one of our most favorite topics in the world to talk about uninterrupted compounding, because it's so powerful. And frankly, it's really what attracts people to the strategy that we work with when they find out how this uninterrupted compounding works and how it really is a very, very unique feature and benefit to our strategy. And it's so unique that there is actually a $100,000 challenge out there that if you find a strategy that has all the benefits of our strategy, including the uninterrupted compounding, you'd actually qualify for $100,000. And before you get really excited, I'm here to tell you that I think in about 10 years since the challenge has been out there, no one has been able to, um, to win it because there really is no other strategy that does everything that we do. But today we're going to focus on that uninterrupted compounding and excited to be here. Yes, absolutely. So Teresa, to, to start today, let's um, just kind of refresh um, in everyone's mind what uninterrupted compounding is. Um, so how would you describe that? Well. In order to explain uninterrupted compounding, let's just look at compounding interest to start with. And most people understand the concept of compounding interest. Uh, Einstein called it the eighth wonder of the world. And the analogy that we gave in our previous podcast was, you know, imagine a, a snowball and you're at the top of a mountain. And over time, as that snowball goes down the mountain, it picks up speed and it gets bigger and bigger, and the surface area of that snowball gets bigger and bigger, and there comes a point in that snowball, if it's allowed to free fall, go down the mountain, it just gets bigger and bigger, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. But what happens with most people and their savings and their investing is that they block that snowball, they stop that snowball, or they start uh, their snowball really low down on the mountain. And so... If you've got the opportunity to have money in a savings account and a savings strategy where that compounding, that growth does not get blocked or uninterrupted, then there comes a point in time where it picks up momentum and it's exponential, the growth. And so the strategy that we work with has that opportunity to, to compound uninterrupted. Great. So it sounds like the real key here is to get started as soon as possible in terms of putting your money someplace where it's going to grow and compound uninterrupted. And also to make sure that we're not interrupting the compounding through losses, through taxes, through fees, and also through spending. Exactly. And most people don't realize that spending is probably the greatest financial need that they have. I think people know this intuitively, but from a financial planning perspective, right, we're not taught this. We're not taught you need to plan for spending. We're taught we need to plan for college and for retirement and for death, right? If we plan for spending, which if you breathe, You've got to spend money. You've got to eat. You've got to buy shelter. You've, you've got families. You've got cars. You've got transportation. You've got trips. And the larger you live, the more spending you have, right? So if you were to plan for spending and use our strategy, then you have the opportunity to take advantage of the uninterrupted compounding 
and still continue to spend your money because we're not about living small and especially, you know, business owners, BFS community, we're all about you building your business and impacting the world, right? And when you do that, businesses spend more money. I mean, it's just the nature of business. You've got payroll and you've got equipment and you've got um, marketing and all sorts of more dollars, right, that are available to go through this strategy. Imagine if you had the power of uninterrupted compounding when it comes to your your business spending as well. Great. Yeah. So today what we're going to be talking about is a case study using our wealth creation, right? Um, The wealth creation equation, which is having the use and control of your money without interrupting the compounding. So Teresa, for today's call, the case study that we're going to be looking at is two scenarios that everyone does. Everyone saves money and everyone finances cars. But we're going to show the audience today how if you shift just one thing about how you do those two things, you can actually create wealth by not interrupting the compounding of your dollars. So Kristen, what are the two ways that are are two things that people do all the time when it comes to buying cars? How do they typically buy cars? Either they pay cash or they finance it. Yep. And I'm sure the audience can totally relate to that. And if you're a saver and you're doing it the traditional saving model, Basically, what you do is you put money into a savings account, and then when you've got enough money to buy your car, you pay cash. Right. So for, you know, our savings example, we took a look at if you were to save $10,000 a year, and let's say you were going to pay cash for five cars over the next 30 years, and each one of those cars cost you $20,000 just to keep the, the number simple. If you are using the money that you are saving inside your savings account to pay cash for those cars, at the end of 30 years, you would have just about $276,000. However, if you had kept that money in your savings account for those same 30 years without touching it, without interrupting the compounding, you could have had $385,000. So there is an opportunity cost there um, in terms of using your cash to pay cash for cars. Yes. And you know, what's interesting, if you had financed five cars over the same 30 year period of time, you would have paid a hundred thousand dollars in principal for those cars. And the total interest cost would have been $12,977. Isn't that interesting that the interest cost for those five cars was less than the opportunity cost on the savings. You want to explain that, Kristen? Yes, yes, that is a really interesting point. And the reason that that happens is because when we have money inside a savings account, um, every time you earn interest, that interest is added to the principal of your account. And so that principal gets bigger and bigger over time. And every time that we earn interest, it's earned on a bigger principle. It's the power of compounded interest on an increasing balance. When we finance something, the opposite happens. Every time you make a payment towards that uh, loan balance, the principle of the loan decreases. And so when you're charged interest, the charges are less and less over time because the principle is lower and lower. So we have compounded interest and a decreasing balance. So way number one is paying cash. And there's a huge opportunity cost to doing that. The way number two, strategy number two is financing your car. Just taking a loan from a lender and borrow the money and paying interest to the lender. The third way is taking the strategy, the whole life insurance strategy, borrowing money from your policy and paying cash for the cars. And that's self-financing the cars. And you want to speak to that? Absolutely. So, Teresa, the point you're making about the opportunity cost when you finance cars is is very important. 
Um, so why don't we take it a step further and say, well, you know, if we're going to pay cash for our own cars, why wouldn't we self finance those cars? And instead of just taking the money out of our bank account and paying cash for those cars, why wouldn't we just pay ourselves back like we would a bank? You know, there's no reason why we shouldn't treat um, ourselves as good as we treat a banker, right? Um, and so if we did that, if we actually paid ourselves back when we self-finance cars, we would actually end up recapturing that opportunity cost. And we'd end up with $396,000 now in our savings account at the end of 30 years after spending $100,000 on cars and paying ourselves back as if we're the bankers. Absolutely. So we're looking at, just to regroup, if you were to save $10,000 a year over 30 years, and the interest rate we're using is actually 2.1%, which is the current U.S. Treasury yield right? So you'd have $385,000. I know, you know, listening to this is a little bit difficult because you don't have the numbers in front of you. That's why I want to review them. If you were to finance cars, it would actually cost you $12,977. Those are five cars, 20,000 each over 30 years. It would cost you 112,000. The interest cost is 12,977. If you paid cash for cars, as we're taught to do, save the money, buy the car with cash, the opportunity cost is over $110,000. But if you self-finance the cars where you didn't go to a bank, you paid your savings account back the same interest you would have paid a third party, you'd have $396,000. So frankly, self-financing your cars is the better option, but we've got the best option with our strategy. And what is that, Kristen? Yes. So our strategy uses dividend paying whole life insurance that allows you to cut out the bankers, cut out the finance company, save your money, pay cash for your cars. Pay yourself back just like you would uh, a banker. And in this scenario, you end up with $563,000 at the end of 30 years after paying $100,000 for your cars. That is a considerable amount of money. And this speaks to the power of uninterrupted compounding. You got to enjoy your cars and keep your money working for you. Now, I don't know about you, Kristen, but in my family, when I was growing up, my father bought cars for himself, for my mom. We had three kids. We each had a car. As we've grown up, just from that little family, right, we've all bought multiple cars. I mean, think about how many cars you've owned in your lifetime, right? Let's say I owned, you know, up to this point, five, six, seven, eight cars. What if all of us collectively borrowed money from our family whole life policy and that's all we did was borrow cars? How much money would that be over 30 years? A small fortune. It would be tremendous. And was there any risk involved? There was not. No, the only difference between using the dividend paying whole life insurance and using your savings account as a vehicle for self-financing is that with the dividend paying whole life insurance policy, the money that you've borrowed out for your cars is still growing uninterrupted. You're still compounding your cash for the future. Think about RVs, think about boats, think about motorcycles, think about, now let's go to the home improvement world, right? Think about your roofs, think about your generators, think about new kitchens, new baths, all the money that people spend, right? We're so focused on chasing return 
outside of us where there's risk in real estate and Wall Street, when just in our spending, we can take advantage of the strategy and uninterrupted compounding that power and fund our college for our kids, fund our retirement, fund a legacy for future generations. And we are not talking about taking any risk whatsoever. And the disclaimer is that the insurance, the only risk there is, is the guarantee of the insurance companies and the insurance companies we use have been around for over a hundred plus years and they've performed beautifully every single year for a hundred plus years. So long, long track record. And so the message is, right, do you, you know, going back to the podcast from last month, Kristen, where we talked about, you know, how the investing industry, which it is an industry, their objective is to separate us from our money. And their programming and their message is constantly, you know, you've got to have a return in order to create wealth and to chase that return. And in order to chase that return, you've got to accept a certain level of risk. And we're here to tell you, you absolutely do not. And if you want to chase that risk, great, go for it. And at the same time, you can fund your policy to take care of your spending. And it will actually make you a better investor because you know that you've got your reserves. You know that you've got your money continuing to grow no matter what. And when the markets uh, consolidate or have losses or the economy Uh, gets into a recession or a depression, or the real estate market goes down, you'll be in a better frame of mind to make better decisions because you know you've got your backup plan. You know you've got your reserves. You know that you can weather the market's ups and downs. Very well said, Teresa. And absolutely, this strategy puts you in a position where you can take advantage of opportunities that come up, even in the worst economic times, because you have your cash and you have that leverage. So, Teresa, to conclude today's call, uh, we're here to help our audience. We're here to help you. Our only goal is to help you achieve your goals. If you'd like to learn more about this strategy, and how you can implement it in your own life, you can either text WELL to 512-948-3594, or you can reach out to us directly. Our phone number is 1-800-382-0830. And I would say, in terms of urgency, money is not your most important currency time is. It's the most valuable currency in the world and you must invest it wisely because you know what? That snowball that we talked about, that mountain, the older you get, that's the smaller the mountain gets, right? In terms of what you can grow and the best math you can learn to calculate is the future cost of your current decisions. So think about how much money it's costing you spending money today on the cars, on the vacations, on the home improvements, on the you know equipment that you need to buy for your business, all of that. If you're not spending that money in a strategic way, you're cutting off the compounding and it's costing you a lot of money. So Thank you so much for joining us today. Kristen, thank you so much for partnering with me and communicating this very important message. And we wish you all a fantastic day. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Teresa. And thank you to the BFS community. We'll talk to you next month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.